Hi, I'm George Crump, Chief Marketing Officer with Store One. As I talk to IT professionals, there are four top things they need to accomplish uh, in their storage infrastructure. Number one is lower cost. Absolutely have to drive down the cost of storage, it's just getting out of control. Number two, and probably right there with it, is improving data protection. It costs too much to create data, and the data is too valuable to lose it. So improving data protection is a high priority. Third is accelerate performance. We're always under pressure to deliver information faster and faster, to scale bigger, things like that. So accelerating performance is also a top priority. And then finally, at some point, we have to simplify management to make the environment easier to manage so it can continue to grow and keep pace with the needs of the organization. Now, the challenge is, is that most data centers look like this. In fact, this is probably, mo many people watching this would wish their data center was this simple. But in most cases, we have a, a collection of databases. A lot of times they're on their own storage network, probably fiber channel, uh, maybe going to an all flash array. Uh, then we might have a VMware environment or virtualized environment. Um, and it might be iSCSI to either a hard disk based system or a hybrid uh, based system. And then at some point you need to collaborate with your fellow employees. So uh, like a network attached storage system is pretty common. Uh, and then we're seeing the uh, slow growth in object storage where uh, thanks to things like uh, Internet of Things and just all the files and uh, unstructured data that's being created, the ability to analyze and process that data is becoming a key requirement. So the ability to support object and S3 is also something that's high on everybody's priority list. So how do you take this and simplify it so you can do and accomplish these four goals that I have written up here? Well, the idea was to do this with software-defined storage. And what we were going to do with software-defined storage is put a layer right here that abstracted the storage software from the storage hardware. Um, most storage systems that you would buy today have that integrated in together. By abstracting it, we did accomplish one thing. We, we might have lowered the cost of storage a little bit because we were able to separate the hardware purchase from the software purchase. The challenge is that we still have different software-defined storage solutions for every single use case that I have uh, up here. And so we really need to rethink how that is going to work. And we think the right way to do that is with an enterprise storage platform. So what an enterprise storage platform does is cross these boundaries to provide a single platform that we call the enterprise storage platform. one platform to cover all the use cases in the data center. But from our platform, we can support all types of media. So for example, we could support flash, hard disk drives, cloud, and even future technologies like Intel Optane. What that means is we can support all the different media that's available today and all the media that's coming down in the future so you have a built-in future-proofed storage system. Okay. The second thing is we've got to be able to support all the protocols. So the platform can deliver Fiber Channel, iSCSI, Object, and NAS, NFS, and SMB. So again, this one interface can do all of that. So what we have essentially done is moved this function down to here. So now from this platform, we're controlling and providing services, high performance services to databases, uh, services to uh, virtualized environments, as well as object and NAS. So all of this simplifies management. Now I have one interface that allows me to see into it. I can provide all the use cases and uh, provision storage in any way that I need to. 
The key thing also is to make sure we don't go backwards when it comes to performance. So what we're able to do is deliver the full performance of the media that's being installed in the system. So we can deliver roughly 80 to 90% of the raw performance of a flash drive. If you look at most of the other systems on the market today, they're delivering somewhere between 10 to 20% per drive performance. Well, if you have to buy 24 drives to get 300,000 IOPS, and we can do it in five drives, we're gonna have a significantly less expensive system. By the way, something that would really challenge us, you would think, would be Optane. We've just uh, completed testing where we're showing three drives delivering over a million IOPS. So again, we're getting 80 to 90% of the performance capable in those drives as well. Now, so that takes care of performance. We can, with less hardware and less media, deliver better performance than competitors. The next big one is how do we improve data protection? Well, we've done two things here. First of all, we have a feature called VRAID, which is volume level RAID. So we can now create a, a RAID system based on the specific volume. So essentially for each use case, we, should, we can have different levels of protection. So depending on the, the importance and the criticality of the system, you can set it up to survive one drive failure, two drive failures, three drive failures, however many you want, assuming you have enough drives in the system, and the V-RAID will take care of that for you. We do that without impacting performance. The Optane performance number that I was mentioning earlier, the million IOPS, we did that with data protection active. The second thing we have is snapshots. We can take unlimited number of snapshots, retain them for an indefinite period of time, again, without impacting performance. So now you can use snapshots as a form of data retention. If you're asynchronously replicating those snapshots to another system, you can also uh, count on that as some form of backup. In fact, in many cases, a lot of our customers see that as a backup replacement. The third thing that I already hinted to a little bit is replication. So we have the ability to asynchronous, near synchronous, or synchronously replicate data between two of our enterprise storage platform uh, solutions. So you could have one on-prem to have a synchronous copy right there in the data center and then asynchronously replicate to an off-prem uh, system, or you could just do uh, one from the primary site to a disaster recovery site. It can even be the cloud. So you could actually replicate to a cloud location as well. So data protection in the solution is just rock solid. We're protected from multiple media failures. We're protected from uh, disasters. And we're also protected from uh, accidental file deletions, uh, ransomware, anything like that. So that's all covered. Lower cost then sort of becomes the, the byproduct of all of that work. Because we can get so much performance from so few drives on less hardware, we're just less expensive. Because we're software and we can make almost any hardware work with our system, we're just less, exp less expensive. Because we can do disaster recovery to almost any site, any hardware, even the cloud, we're just less expensive. The, so the work we did in the core of the solution to create this platform, all of that leads to lowering costs. Most of our customers find that we can reduce their storage infrastructure costs by 45%. That's a staggering reduction in cost. It makes a huge difference uh, overall in the infrastructure. So if you're looking for a solution that can lower cost, improve your data protection and data retention capabilities, accelerate performance, get the maximum performance out of the uh, storage that you're putting into the system, and all while simplifying management, our storage platform is an excellent place to start. I'm George Crump. Thanks for joining us.